My name is David, and I'm going to do a live cooking show for everybody today. There you are. Uh, we're going to focus some beautiful seafood, because it's nice and beautiful out. Praise God, they say when the sun is shining, God is listening. Um, so I kept it a little bit light today. And just to give you a little bit of um, a history of myself, I used to work at Araxi way back when. I currently work in Vancouver. I worked at Hawksworth Restaurant, La Quisha, lots of award-winning restaurants. And currently I'm working at Ancora. It's a brand new restaurant right on the water underneath the Granville Bridge. And we focus on sushi and fresh seafood and local ingredients. So I brought some stuff today just to show you guys what I do. So uh, yeah. To get started, I just want to give you an overview of what I'm going to cook today. So I have some beautiful fresh uh, Coquitlam Bay scallops. We have some beautiful lobster that, that was cooked yesterday, it was alive and wiggling, all that stuff. And I just got some, I went to Whole Foods yesterday and it's halibut season and they have all the fresh produce coming in. This beautiful purple cauliflower, I don't know if you've ever seen that before. Uh, sunchokes or Ju Jerusalem artichokes. We have some beautiful microgreens. I got some caviar. Just, uh, they say when you add caviar to a dish, you can add uh, $15 to the price. So this is locally sustained caviar. It's called Divine. It's, um, it's, it's, it's sustainable. So what that means is uh, you don't have to really, we, we, it's farm sturgeon caviar. So it's, it's a great product and it's available locally in uh, Vancouver and uh, I'm sure they serve it all around uh, Whistler. Some hedgehog mushrooms. Yeah, so let's get started. Enough talk. Uh, the first dish I'm gonna prepare is a risotto. So this is actually a featured dish on the Ancora menu. So what we do is we take our lobster, we have boiling salted water, we blanch it very quickly and that releases the flesh from the shells. And we make a bisque out of the shells. Nothing in the kitchen ever goes to waste. And then we just kind of piece the lobster up and it's gonna go into the mix. It's fairly raw right now because lobster gets overcooked if you uh, cook it too much, right? So it's fairly raw. I'm gonna do it with some of these hedgehog mushrooms, which are beautiful. I've just torn them into pieces, washed them, and um, also, uh, let's see, what else we got? And some, some regular mushrooms. It's just a mushroom mix. We have some oysters, some shimijis, and uh, yeah, just a nice blend of mushrooms, and we're gonna utilize some of this beautiful purple cauliflower. So, when you cook risotto, it takes 21 minutes. So I don't have that much time to uh, talk that much. So what we do in the restaurant is we'll cook a big batch. We'll take like one kilo of risotto. We take onions, we take garlic, we sweat it off, add our rice. It's very important to toast it. And then we add a vegetable stock or a chicken stock and just let it cook, let it cook, let it cook for about 18 minutes till it's al dente. So this way we can portion it out into portions and when you come in to eat at a restaurant, we can just quickly throw it into a pan, reheat it, get your Parmesan cheese, get your butter in there, make it delicious, and serve it to you a la minute. So that's what I have here, and I've just portioned it out. It's 50 grams, so this is a main course size uh, amount of rice. First thing I'm gonna do, so I'm just gonna take some shallots, and I'm gonna get my knife out if I can find it. And we're just gonna, we're just gonna chop the shallots up fairly fine, and we're gonna start the base for our risotto. So I'll just dice it up. And a lot of people uh, don't know how to cut an onion. I worked on a cruise ship for three years, and this is what I did. So uh, it was called the Culinary Arts Center. And basically, we would have the same setup, and I would teach people how to cook. So I know it seems like a basic task, but chopping an onion, uh, I always ask my guests, uh, do you have any uh, remedies or tricks for not crying when you cut an onion? Because I, I used to hold cooking classes and people would chop an onion like this. And uh, yeah, the difference between a properly chopped onion or shallot is this and this doesn't cook at the same time. So the key to chopping an onion and to not crying is you just cut it on a vertical first, just to the size that you want to prepare and then you cut it horizontal. And it's very important to have a sharp knife and cook the onion or cut the onion as little as possible. Um, when I worked on the cruise ship, you can imagine the volume of, of guests that we had to serve and uh, some of the cooks, I would see them wearing ski goggles. 
slicing onions on the, on the slicer, but the key is just to chop the onion as little as possible to get the desired consistency. So I chopped it vertical, horizontal, and then I'm just gonna, with a sharp knife, chop down, and then we can start cooking. Okay, so hopefully these burners work. I'm just gonna get my pot or my uh, pan nice and warm. I like to use butter. A lot of chefs will use olive oil, they use onions. It's all depending on your preference, but butter always makes stuff taste good. So into the pan we go, and we're just gonna sweat the onions or the shallots until they're translucent. So what that means is it's not gonna be caramelized, not gonna get any color. It's just gonna be nice and cooked through. So this is the start of our base. When I cooked the risotto, once I toasted the rice, I added white wine. So that really infuses the flavor. And uh, it doesn't taste whiny, so kids can eat it. It's okay. Because um, we reduce all of the alcohol out of the wine, and we get the wine flavor. And I always recommend when you're cooking with wine, always use something that you like to drink. It's an easy wine pairing. If, you just, if you're cooking with a nice Cab Sauvignon, um, it's going to be a great pairing for red meat. Or a nice uh, white wine, like... Uh, yeah, Pinot Noir or something like this. It's a great pairing for your risotto. And we don't want to overpower the flavors because the lobster obviously is very expensive. And we really want to showcase the flavor of the lobster. Okay, so this is sweating, translucent. The next thing I'm going to do is throw in my hedgehog mushrooms. So these uh, mushrooms are, are uh, they're forest mushrooms. So it's very important when you're preparing mushrooms like this to get all of the the, the pine needles and the grit out. So what we do is we wash them in warm water and just kind of shake them a little bit. And then you just put them on a tray and let them dry out naturally. And that way um, you don't get any uh, stuff in your teeth. We're gonna saute these quickly. And uh, I'm trained as a French chef, okay? And uh, I just started working at Ancora and they're very big on just using local ingredients from raw and just cooking them, caramelizing them, bringing out the natural flavors. So I'm not gonna blanch this cauliflower. It's beautiful, it's purple, it's local, it's organic, all of the good things. So what I do, oh, sorry, I thought someone, any, if anybody has a question at any time, please don't hesitate to ask, but I'm gonna throw it in raw. So I'm gonna throw it into my pan, and it's very expensive. I think uh, for one bunch of this, I paid like five bucks. So we really want to keep that purple color. We want to keep the freshness of the vegetables. We're going to throw them into the pan and just continue to saute it. And by the time the rice is cooked and the lobster goes in, everything's going to come together. It's going to be delicious. It's going to be awesome. So cauliflower goes in. And uh, yeah, what we do in the restaurant is we actually, um, we use regular cauliflower, but we roast it. We roast it so it gets some nice uh, caramelization on it, nice and golden brown, and then it goes in. And we add a little bit of cauliflower puree when the risotto is done, and it really brings out that nice flavor. So very quickly, just give that a little saute. And then in goes my rice. So pop. And the key to risotto is uh, to always have boiling hot stock. Obviously, I can't do that right now because I'm restricted to my, uh, my stove space. But I just got some regular uh, low sodium chicken stock. You can use vegetable stock. You could even use fish stock for this dish. But what I'm gonna do is just add my liquid in. And um, I worked at La Quercia. It's um, a very good Italian restaurant in Vancouver. And it, it's, it changed my mind on Italian food. So um, when you're cooking risotto, always use a wooden spoon because if you're using a metal spoon, you break the rice. This is a little bit more gentle, and the key is to always stir as you cook. I've seen in restaurants, bad restaurants in my life, um, people add cream to risotto. This is arborio rice, okay? So when you cook it, it contains a lot of starch. So the creaminess effect comes from stirring and uh, agitating the rice. So the more you stir it, the more creamy your risotto is gonna be. So we're gonna let that come up to a boil, obviously, because that's what the desired effect should be. And then I have just some uh, nice Parmesan cheese. I have butter. Uh, what else do I have? Yeah, and my lobster. Okay, so while that's coming up to a boil, we can uh, focus on our next dish, which is gonna be scallops. Okay, so these scallops are beautiful, big, fresh. 
Um, when you're using frozen scallops, normally you have to defrost them. They contain a lot of liquid, a lot of uh, water retention. So if you, if you are using frozen scallops, just let them defrost at room temperature, lay them on a tray, and get some absorbent paper or a paper towel, and just let them get as much of the moisture out of the scallops as possible. That way we can get a nice sear. In the meantime, I'll get my pan nice and scorching hot. So my risotto is coming up to a boil. And we're just gonna continue to stir it. And also when you're cooking, a lot of people just add a handful of salt into the pan and uh, when they're done cooking and it, it gives a really salty flavor. So I always uh, recommend just to season as you cook. So that way by the end of the, end of the cooking process, you don't have to add any salt, it's ready to go. And we have to keep in mind that Parmesan is very salty as well. So we, we don't want to over season our beautiful risotto. The lobster at this point can go in. And uh, this is just going to finish the cooking process. So you can see it's fairly raw right now. We're going to go in. And my chef was nice enough to lend me these beautiful plates. So at Ancora, um, it's a brand new restaurant. I like working in restaurants like this because everything's new. Um, but saying that I've also worked in the dingiest kitchens, I've worked in large scale operations. So you get a, a feel for, if you can work in a, in a bad kitchen, then you can work in a good kitchen. But uh, this is my beautiful plate that we're gonna serve the risotto in. It's very rustic, it's made out of clay. It probably costs like $70 for this plate. And the thing he told me, he was like, uh, you can borrow the plates, but make sure you bring them back. And uh, so I don't wanna break them, I'm a little bit nervous. My risotto is starting to reduce. And you can see the, the cauliflower is starting to cook, okay? And it's still retaining that nice bright green color. The lobster is starting to cook, everything's coming together. In the meantime, I'll start grating my parm. So I just have a micro, microplane grater, and I'm just gonna shred it. And uh, another thing I always used to tell my guests is I have five favorite ingredients. So can anybody guess? Salt, butter, cheese, herbs, fresh herbs is the way to go. And then the last one, I kind of forgot what it was, but uh, those four are definitely my five favorite. <laughs> Alcohol, oh, that's number one. <laughs> no, definitely alcohol, definitely enhances flavor. Um, you can see now my pants starting to smoke. That's a good sign. My pants are starting to smoke. <laughs> so what I can do now is I'm cooking scallops. I don't want to put, uh, a lot of chefs will say never put black pepper. Hey, Matt, what's up, man? Um, yeah, I'm just gonna season it with some kosher salt, that's it, and just kind of press it down. And then I just have some canola oil. We never wanna use extra virgin olive oil for cooking at high heat because it'll burn, okay? It has a low smoke point. If you use a grapeseed oil, a canola, a vegetable oil, you can really cook stuff. So be liberal with your heat. And my beautiful scallops are gonna go in the pan. I'm actually happy with these burners, they're working. It's uh, one of the joys of live cooking is that anything can go wrong at any time. So into my pan, my risotto is getting nice. What do you do? Add number two, favorite ingredient. Don't be shy. In we go. And this is unsalted butter, by the way. Um, in kitchens, we use unsalted butter because it's, it's much easier to adjust seasoning and you know that you're not going to have a salty dish by the end of your preparation. Okay, so we're almost there. Um, I'm just gonna chop up some fresh parsley. We usually use Italian parsley. I'm using the curly stuff. I'm sure you've seen it on plates at many restaurants in the day, like as a garnish, but we don't do that anymore. Just gonna give it a nice little chop quickly. And with fresh herbs, you don't have to over chop them. A lot of people brutalize the herbs and you lose the fresh vibrance and the color of the herbs. So just one time through is good enough for me. Okay, here we go. This table is not the right standard size, so I'm kind of crouching right now. But we're gonna let the butter melt. And I've seen a lot of people prepare risotto. When I worked at La Quercia, it should be, you should be able to take the, the, the plate and tap it and it'll all go flat. It should be creamy and smooth, it shouldn't be stodgy. 
actually James Walt, the chef of Araxi, he taught me um, not to make your risotto stodgy. I don't know what that means, but that's what he said. So I listened. Yes, chef. In goes my cheese. We'll get everything inside. Yes, chef. <laughs> Who is this lady? Okay, so I'm gonna take my wooden spoon, just let everything come together. My scallops are searing right now. And the key indicator is just to check the sides of the scallop. Once you see a nice golden brown crest appearing, that's when you know you should wait five seconds. Then you flip the scallop. But my rice is coming together. The lobster's cooked. That's splattering. Uh, I better not show that. Uh, yeah, another good trick if you ever want to if you ever want to give your uh, colleagues a hard time is you just put a little bit of water in the squeeze bottle before they start cooking and then it starts to splatter like this. It's awesome. <laughs> or uh, you, when, the new, when the new chefs come into the kitchen, you tell them to throw a piece of ice into the deep fryer or something like this. It's, it's great to take advantage of uh, new cooks coming into the kitchen. That's how you, it's kind of hard love, you know what I mean? But my rice is pretty much there. I'm going to add a little bit of seasoning and add some freshly cracked black pepper, which is perfectly fine. And then we can start to plate. So and you can see this is very runny right now. And this is perfectly fine with me. It should be like creamy. It should be smooth. It should melt in your mouth. Add more cheese. And I'm just going to add a little bit of lemon zest because it is a seafood risotto and it's going to bring out some vibrance in the dish. So in we go, lemon zest, stir it around, okay, and I have my beautiful, why is this splattering so much? <laughs> my beautiful big spoon here, yeah, we put some lemon in for Lauren Lemon. And you can see it's just a nice incorporated rice dish in my beautiful plate. It's very hearty, it's Italian, I mean you can't go wrong with this dish. Okay, in we go. And then, I'm just gonna put this on standby. I also have a nice cool ingredient, some fresh black truffle. And this is uh, pretty expensive, but I mean, when you're eating truffles, eat them. Don't, like a lot of chefs will put like that on a dish and then it's just a novelty. If you're gonna eat truffles, you eat truffles. Okay, so you grate the stuff on there, yeah. you know? <laughs> and uh, by the way, all this food I, I spent with my own money because I wanted to come cook some nice dishes. So someone's going to eat it after. They better enjoy it. In we go with the truffles. Don't be shy. Okay, we'll just give it a nice little wipe. And then I also have these beautiful microgreens. My scallops are still cooking. This is called inversion cooking. So what I'm, I'm going to cook the presentation side down. And then hopefully when I flip it, we're gonna have a nice beautiful golden brown crust. It's gonna be nice and delicious and edible. And when I flip it, they'll be translucent in the center and nice and seared and crispy on the outside. So this is just a bit of uh, garnish just to make the dish enticing. And this is a fairly large portion. You could, I like to serve uh, shared dishes now. So um, food is, uh, is um, very important to everybody. We all need it to survive. So for me, if you put a nice big plate of risotto in the middle of the table, everybody just serves themselves. It's much more of a family gathering, family style. It's delicious. This is one dish. Okay, so there's your lobster risotto with hedgehog mushrooms, black truffle, and some beautiful Parmesan cheese. Scallops. So now I'm starting to look at the sides. They're almost there. In the meantime, I'll get some vegetables together. I'm kind of winging it today. I just got a bunch of cool stuff and I'm going to make a dish. So all these dishes are really simple to prepare. So that's why I kind of came here today. So we'll check our scallops now. Okay, so we'll flip them. Okay, there we go, some crust. At this point, I'm going to take them off the heat because they're going to cook really fast. Okay. So. Yeah, clean up a little bit, yeah. Messy cook. Truffles. Okay, so the scallops are done now. We're gonna remove them from the heat. 
and just place them on this container. We'll just give them a little time to rest. What I'm gonna do is just heat up some veg that I've pre-prepared and we're gonna get it on the plate. So, wish I had more pans. Just gonna wipe this, a little wipe. So we have a nice hot pan right now. I have some yellow beets or golden beets. I've pre-blanched these in a bit of white wine vinegar and water just until they're fork tender. What that means is I can just stick my knife in and it goes in with these. This is another uh, technique that we use in restaurants just to uh, uh, increase the cooking times. Like we can't cook beets to order. I mean, you could roast them, but they'll take at least 25 minutes. So we pre-blanched them and I'm just gonna get everything kind of going. I have some sunchokes or Jerusalem artichokes, same procedure, and I'm just gonna sear them. So I'm gonna get some caramelization. Beets contain a lot of sugar, so do sunchokes. And if you just get a nice hot pan, you get some nice color. Okay, let's see if I can figure this out. Okay, so in we go. Just let those start to sear and get some color. And it's a very rustic dish, very easy, very simple. Where's my other sunchoke? Ah, there it is. Okay, so some nice color. And we're keeping them whole. I like to serve big pieces of vegetables, fennel especially, you can really really gets a nice flavor out of whole ingredients and it just reduces the amount of nutrients that come out when you cook the vegetables. Okay, so quick clean up. And I'm also gonna add some of these beautiful uh, mushrooms, local mushrooms that I, that I got together and just kind of get everything in one pan. So it's very easy for a home cook to prepare these dishes because most of, the, most of these recipes are just one pan. Get everything ready, throw it in one pan, add some butter, add some salt, add some stock, and then we can serve it. So very easy. All right. Yeah, just a little bit of uh, more knowledge about myself. Um, I worked on a cruise ship, Holland America Line, for three years, and um, I was the Culinary Arts Center chef. So what I did basically was cook for a live audience, the guests on the cruise ship, and every day we would host a live cooking show on location. So we traveled around the world. It was a world cruise, and I went to 90 countries. So I'm very fortunate as a chef to uh, be able to see all this stuff. So going to Istanbul, going to Barcelona, going to China, going to South Africa, I saw a lot of different cultures. I saw a lot of different food, and it's really influenced my, uh, my vision on food because uh, everybody eats around the world, okay, and everybody eats different things. And it's very good to keep, keep local. So I can't stress this enough, if, if you go to your farmer's market that we host on Sundays in Whistler, you buy from local. You go to your local butcher, you go to your local fish market, and uh, it might be a little bit more expensive, but you're supporting the culture, you're supporting chefs, you're supporting farmers, and it just, it tastes better. Like, uh, has anybody seen Food Inc? Yeah, so you gotta know where you get your food from. It's very important. So we're getting a nice sear on here. Pull out some tweezer action. And in the kitchen, like you'll see, chefs are like scientists nowadays. We have tweezers and uh, yeah, we pull stuff off and put stuff on. And uh, my dad, my dad's a pharmacist. And when I first started cooking, he was like, what are you doing? Go become a doctor, a lawyer, all this stuff. And then uh, luckily, about 10 years later, he was hosting a dinner party with a bunch of women. And I came home from the cruise ship and he was like, Dave, I need your help. I need you to cook. And then I cooked a wonderful meal for them. And then all of a sudden he showed some respect for my profession. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I told you so. But yeah, I went to school for uh, psychology and all this stuff, and I just like cooking because it's really creative and you can really express the way you eat and what you love, and it's beautiful on a plate. But yeah, that's my story. Uh, the beets, the sunchokes, the mushrooms are starting to get sauteed. We're obviously gonna add some more butter. Okay, in we go, don't be shy. And when you're cooking with uh, butter, it gets really greasy, okay? So a good trick is all you do is just add a little bit of liquid to your dish. And then this way it kind of emulsifies and you get a nice, a nice uh, sauce-like consistency. 
So we're just gonna let that come up to a boil. Of course, I have some fresh thyme here. I'm just gonna chop it. And this is young thyme, so the, the stems aren't very, very hard, okay? So I just um, pull it out, just down. And yeah, normally we would pull off as much of the, of the stalks as you can, and then this way. But today for the demo, I'm just gonna crunch it up. Just be, I don't like to waste food. And I'm just gonna chop this really fine, one time. And it's gonna be perfectly edible, perfectly delicious. Okay, in we go. And also some fresh parsley. Okay. So we'll give this a quick chop. How am I doing, everybody? Am I doing a good job? Because <laughs> we kind of just pulled this all together last minute. And uh, what, what, the, what the projected goal is, is with Steve and myself, we're going to uh, hopefully, he has a studio in uh, Function Junction, and we want to we wanna start doing live cooking shows, like a different uh, entertainment aspect for Whistler. So you, you take the shuttle bus from uh, the village, you come to the studio, you get a live cooking show, and eventually we want to feed you. So for a price, you'll be able to come and see a live entertainment show and then eat a meal and then come back. So it's a great thing to do on a weekend with your family and friends and your kids, whatever. It's, uh, it's, nobody's doing it, so we may as well do it, okay? My sauce and my beets and my mushrooms, my sunchokes are all good to go. A little bit of seasoning, a little bit of black pepper. And then I'm just going to right to the plate. I didn't show you guys my beautiful rainbow Swiss chard too. Whole Foods is like transforming to an amazing, amazing experience. And I went in there yesterday, it's expensive, but they have all the good stuff. Like uh, I was like a kid in a candy store until I saw the check. <laughs> then it was pretty expensive. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to very carefully, precisionly place my vegetables on the plate. And these beautiful beets, they're still nice and whole. And when you're plating food, I mean, if you use good ingredients, then it does the job for itself. You don't have to, like, I've worked in French restaurants. I worked at Hawksworth for over a year in Vancouver, and it, I don't know if anybody's been there before. Anybody? Hawksworth, Vancouver? So David Hawksworth is a tyrant, but for good reason. He's uh, one of the best chefs in British Columbia, guaranteed and uh, they won Restaurant of the Year two years in a row. So it was a great experience and um, we did lots of molecular gastronomy and fancy dishes, all this stuff, but I've moved past that. I just like good food on a plate, Pacific Northwest, utilizing local ingredients. So my mushrooms are on. Okay. And like food should just be tasty and uh, you shouldn't really um, move away from actual food. I mean, this is, this is what it is. Like, those are beets, those are sunchokes. We haven't transformed them into some magnificent uh, creation. And then my scallops, which are nicely rested now, can just go on the plate. And this is like, people, um, people are steering away from fine dining now. It's too expensive. Like, people just want to eat good, sustainable food that's delicious. So that's what I'm going to show you guys today and try to produce. Um, what else do we got? I also like to um, cook raw food with cooked food. So these are beautiful heirloom uh, cherry tomatoes. And all we do is we just cut them in half. My knife can cut. And just throw some raw tomatoes on there. And it's just going to be a nice contrast of raw flavor. And add some of our microgreens in there. And we'll just sprinkle them down the plate. And like you can see, this is a two pan move. I use two pans to create a completely edible uh, dish. It's, it's very low in uh, carbs. I mean, I didn't put any potato, any like uh, heavy starches on there, but it's definitely gonna fill you up. And of course, just to finish it, we're gonna add a little bit of fresh lemon juice over the scallops. Seafood and scallops are delicious, obviously. So that'll just bring out some brightness, and then there's your dish. So, so far we have our scallops with sunchokes, golden beets. We have our lobster and hedgehog mushroom risotto. And last but not least, I wanted to keep it nice and fresh 
Um, this last dish is just going to be um, just like a vegetable dish. So like if you're serving a family style meal, you can just get some vegetables on the plate. So all of these dishes can be served as a group. I have some snap peas. I'm going to add some bacon to it. Everybody loves bacon. You can't go wrong. This is hickory smoked bacon. Um, actually, troiler bacon. So I went to Nestor's Market today and picked it up last minute. I was just trying to find something to prepare. Um, I also got some beautiful lettuce, okay, and this uh, rainbow Swiss chard. So with Swiss chard, it's all green, right? But a lot of people don't think you can eat the stems. The stems are perfectly edible. So what we do is we just tear off the leaves. We're going to utilize the stems. And we're just going to tear it up into um, nice sized pieces. So I have my bowl here, and I'm just going to start to tear it up. And eventually, once my pan's nice and warm, it's going to wilt. And we're going to have like, a nice spread of this purple cauliflower. We're going to use some of the Swiss chard. We're going to use, um, what else, some of the bacon and some more mushrooms. And cheese, of course, my favorite ingredients. So we put these in the pan, or the pot, or the bowl. And we're not going to need that much because I have a small pan. Always get high heat. OK, in we go. Save the stems. OK, so that's enough for the dish. And then the lettuce will just be a side. I have some, uh, I made some balsamic vinaigrette. When you're making a vinaigrette, it's very easy. You get a good quality vinegar, and you add one part vinegar, three parts oil. And this is the time when you use extra virgin olive oil, because uh, olive oil is meant for finishing and salad dressing, stuff like this. Um, if you ever want to cook with olive oil to get flavor, a good trick is you take your vegetable oil and you take regular olive oil and blend it. So it's like. Pardon me? You get Popeye with it. <laughs> but you blend the oil together, and then you still get the olive oil flavor, but you can cook at higher heats. But what I did was I just got some really good uh, balsamico and added my extra virgin olive oil. And it's, it's not an emulsifying dressing. So you mix it, and it separates. And I always tell people you can use a squeeze bottle or a Tupperware, and you just give it a shake, and then you have a dressing. Wow, it's magic. Um, I'm going to add just a little bit of um, butter to the pan, just to start to kind of sweat the mushrooms. So in we go. And then the Swiss chard will go in at the last minute. I'll throw in some bacon right now as well. And this is, this is sm double smoked, OK? So I could eat this raw right now. It's actually quite delicious. But um, I'm just going to get a little bit of color on it, crisp it up a little bit, get some flavor into this dish. And I'm going to show you guys a warm vinaigrette, OK? So a lot of people think that salad dressings need to be cold. But if, if it's at room temperature, it's perfectly fine. We're going to have a warm salad dressing. Sorry, I don't know how to work these things. OK, so a little bit of garlic. Just clean up a little bit here. Ah! OK, so garlic, very easy to prepare. All you do is just give it a little smash. And then it's easy to peel. A lot of people go and buy the, the garlic in the jar and stuff like this. Don't do that. Just get garlic. And then we just give it a quick chop. And you don't need much. OK? So into the pan. I'm not getting any heat. Ah, that one's hot. OK, into the pan. And eventually, hopefully, uh, I'll get some more professional equipment here. I'm using like a uh, Suzy Homemaker cutting board. Uh, it's not very professional, but uh, we're going to work on getting equipment for this uh, project, and we're going to make it nice. But so far, so good. The stems, uh, we just kind of want to clean them up a little bit, and then we're just going to give them a nice, uh, a nice fine chop. OK, so these guys are perfectly good to eat raw. I mean, a lot of people are on raw food diets nowadays, but we're just going to give them a quick sweat and uh, hopefully it's going to add some vibrance to the dish. It's going to add some color. It's going to be nice and delicious. Do you have any other nice colors? Ah, yeah. OK, we'll keep them. OK, so we're just going to get this nice and sauteed. Uh, what else do we have? Our cauliflower can go in. Aluminate. We want to keep some nice crunch to our dish. It's going to be nice and delicious. So I'll just quickly prepare this. OK, so in we go to the pan. 
Because the bacon, you don't need, it's not like uh, bacon and eggs where you need crispy bacon. I, I prefer to have a nice soft bacon. The fat's gonna mix in with the mushrooms. And it's a one pan dish again. All these dishes are very easy to prepare and you can do them and still enjoy your meal. The worst thing is when you're hosting a dinner party or having a family meal and you're stuck in the kitchen. Like, uh, the best thing to do is to prepare ahead, think smart, work smart, so you can actually enjoy like a Thanksgiving dinner or something that you're eating with your family and friends. And it's really easy. Okay, so I'll get some stuff out of the way here quickly. My salad is right here. Okay, so I'm just gonna rip off the leaves. This is easy. This is beautiful, like I think it's Lola Rosa or Red Oak. No, it's Red Oak. I, I saw the guy putting it away, I was like, give me that. And I bought it, it's all good. So now tear it off, just into manageable pieces. Lettuce, uh, when I worked at Hawksworth, the sous chef told me it should be whimsical. Like you don't overdo lettuce. You always treat it with your hands, don't chop it. Don't agitate it, just make it nice. Okay, so that's enough for our dish. It's getting nicely sauteed. Okay, let's get this out of the way. So my dish is here. We're almost ready to start assembling these snap peas. If you ever have to clean them, you just pull one side down, one side down. And then that way, this is kind of not edible. It's really stringy, fibrous. The snap peas are gonna go in whole, why not? Actually, this wasn't even on my menu, but uh, a wonderful friend over here was eating them, and I decided to put it on. So when I go uh, shopping, like, uh, you wouldn't believe it, but chefs actually eat not very well. Uh, when we go shopping, we see what's on sale, <laughs> and uh, kind of prepare a dish from that. A lot of times I've had to um, just see what's in the fridge, and it's kind of like a black box. So <laughs> you prepare your meal based on Okay, I have ketchup, I have some sriracha, I have a little bit of rice over here, and this leftover uh, stew. Let's make a dish. But yeah, that's the life of a chef. Can't complain. Forgot to put the caviar on, actually. So, we'll pop open the caviar. This is pretty much ready to go. Caviar is actually on the scallop dish. So just to add a little bit of saltiness, a bit of richness to the dish, right on top of the scallops there, and boom. This dish cost $15 before, now it costs 25 Okay, yeah. Don't be shy, caviar and truffles, stuff like this, you eat it. Last night, um, I came up to Whistler and I got a few of my friends to try caviar, and they didn't seem very impressed. But uh, we serve caviar, caviar service. This is a 30 gram tin. It comes with bellinis, uh, creme fraiche, and chives. It's just a great, elegant way to finish a meal, start a meal, drink some champagne, whatever your heart desires. Okay, where's my big spoon? Okay, it's gone. So nicely sauteed all together, right down the center of the plate. And again, it's just a one pan dish. Believe me, um, right now, um, it's a small team where I work, uh, and I'm currently the entremetier. So what that means is uh, I prepare all the vegetables and starches. And uh, we kind of rotate around, but right now that's my job. There's only four of us, plus uh, four main cooks, and then we have some hourly cooks that we bring in when we need them. So it's a small team, and we work 12 plus hours a day, every day, and my station is the hardest. So. All these guys come in with their tenderloin, clean it, nice life. I have to come in like early and cut all the vegetables and run around, uh, make risotto, make black rice, make paves. It's a, it's a very honorable station because once you get the hang of it, you really, uh, you can go anywhere else. And I've done it a few times over the years, but I'm enjoying it. I really like it. If anybody has the chance to go to Ancora, it's right underneath the Granville Bridge in Vancouver. And um, it's, it's a beautiful restaurant. It's been uh, remodeled by, um, by a graphic designer, so it's not like uh, everything is beautiful. It's all white, and we focus on seafood. We have a sushi chef that's been in the industry for years at Blue Water Cafe and um, all around. His name's Yoshi. He is like an artist at work. When you see this guy work and cutting fish, 
we just stand back because uh, we can't help him. We don't know what to do. He's uh, very busy and he has, a, he has a following and he's a really nice guy. I mean, he's 65 years old and he still works like a 20 year old. It's quite amazing to watch this guy. Yoshi, what? Okay, my lettuce is gonna go on. And I, I spoke about a warm vinaigrette, okay? So this is just a very rustic, easy dish. Um, very, in the same pan that I used, why not? We're just going to mix it around and just bring it up to a slight simmer. And then I'm just gonna nappe it onto my dish. It's gonna slowly wilt the lettuce. Uh, let's put some more truffle on there. I gotta use it for something. Fill it up, why not? Mushroom flavor. Okay, on we go with the truffle. And then the vinaigrette just up to a simmer because it will start to separate. The oil will make it greasy, but that's fine. In we go. Okay, and then we just put it all over. Really add some nice flavor. And I use really good balsamic vinegar. It's aged. It's almost like a syrup. So don't go and buy the cheap stuff. If you're gonna eat with your family and you want them to live lo long, prosperous lives, spend some money on ingredients. And what do they write? On the books when I worked at Araxi, um, live long and feed a farmer. That was his signature uh, dish. <laughs> okay, just a little bit more cress on there. Why not utilize it? Microgreens just make stuff look nice, but don't overdo it. People tend to put microgreens on everything, but uh, you can get different flavors. So these are actually harvested. This was harvested on April 6th, and uh, you can get cilantro, you can get basil, you can get uh, red radish, you can get this spicy mix, you can get organic mix, which has a combination of all of them. So there's lots of options, and they all actually like pack a good punch of flavor, and it's really delicious. And I said cheese I like on everything. A little bit of cheese to make it nice and rich. And how long did I take there? Probably about 35 minutes. And I have three beautiful dishes that can be eaten as a whole meal, and I'm sure these guys will enjoy it after the show. <laughs> and uh, that's it, folks. So right here we have our warm bacon mushroom salad. We have our lobster, hedgehog, truffle, risotto. And we have our beautiful Coquitlam Bay Scallop, Divine Caviar, Sun Choke, and Golden Beet Extravaganza. <laughs> so to end, I want everybody to uh, thank you for coming. And um, my name's Dave, if you don't remember. And I want you to support, we have a sign right here. So if you go on WMN.com, WNStudio.com, uh, there's lots of information there about what we're doing, and this booth will be open all week. And um, we're going to do another cooking show next, next weekend. So if you're still in town, come, come check it out. Feel free to come up, ask questions, say hi, look at the dishes, and I'm about ready for lunch. Cheers. <laughs> hey, how's it going?